Hi there folks, uh, so during one of my past videos uh, I said that I would sort of dive into how I got started with Warhammer Fantasy Battles uh, and it pretty much all started with this box. So um, for those of you who don't know, well, there's probably quite a lot of you, uh, I started Warhammer as a hobby back during secondary school. Um, I had never really looked at models in Games Workshop before. My dad had kind of mentioned that they had tanks and that kind of thing, but I'd never really gone in and, and had a look at the models and that kind of stuff. Um, but back uh, when I was a kid, just before senior school, about sort of 11 years old, uh, a friend of mine uh, chatted to me in the lunch hall about all things Warhammer and introduced me to Warhammer 40,000 and Warhammer Fantasy Battles and all that kind of thing. Uh, now I did actually start off by buying, um, well looking to buy some 40k stuff originally, but one of the things that drew my eye when I went into Games Workshop back in the day was this box set. So this was a box that came with uh, 20 uh, Skaven clan rats as you can see here. Most of them were plastic, apart from the champion who you can see right in the middle there who came with a metal head and uh, maybe it was a metal banner, I think it was for that particular standard. Uh, but this was the first set that I ever bought and I didn't really know what I was doing. So I bought this and I bought, I think it was a Night Runner or a Gutter Runner, I think it was, which was a, a Skaven cloaked in a, uh, uh, cloaked up with a dagger in hand. Um, and that was literally all I bought. Um, I painted it up badly uh, they were basically just splashed on brown with um, uh, I think airfix paints to be honest um, and I did silver and all that kind of thing they looked pretty good comparably I guess to a lot of people's uh, armies at the time but you know <laughs> well they had all the paint in the right places I think was the right way to go with it um, but anyway yeah so I, I picked up this this set and we sat down to form a Warhammer club at my school uh, the Warhammer Club was formed of a lot of people who had played Games Workshop before, and then a couple of us who hadn't. Um, when we first started playing, uh, I basically was told I could bring this and whatever I had, and my friends would bring whatever they had, and we would set up games and just have some fun. Uh, so uh, I would play with my little regiment of Skaven Clan Rats, uh, we di I didn't even have a rule book or an army book at this point, but I'd have my Scraping Clan Rats and my Gutter Runner, and I think I had a Warlock Engineer later on as well. And we would literally just play with that, and my friend would tell us all we had to do, all the rules and all that kind of thing, right? Um, it took me like a couple of months to be like, oh cool, this is something that I really want to play a lot more of. And so that's where I moved on to picking up some of my own stuff. Uh, now my friends were collecting, the, um, I think it was Undead, uh, uh, Vampire Counts especially I suppose. Uh, one of my friends had uh, Chaos, Elves and some Dwarves and that kind of thing. And so I had to make a decision of what kind of army I was going to pick. And that's where we moved on to the next phase, which I've handily found some images for, um, where I picked up this book. So for those people who uh, aren't aware there are many many different editions of Warhammer I started with what was effectively 6th edition right so I started learning to play anyway I didn't again I didn't have the rule book <laughs> I only had the army book learning to play with this Warhammer rule book here that you see and this book as well which was called Ravening Hordes so Ravening Hordes had a whole bunch of rules in there for different armies and that kind of thing. And that's more or less what I've used to do a lot of stuff in the past. I think I may, let me just go back to fifth edition actually, because I may have done some fighting in fifth. This might actually be the version of the rules that my friend was teaching me with. And then we moved on to sixth later on and dived into this because this was the one that everyone was kind of like, we're on board with the hobby. So Ravening Hordes had all the updated army lists for pretty much everything. Um, it's kind of like what they do with the indexes between six, uh, between 7th and 8th edition of Warhammer 40,000, which was more recent, obviously. And so I played with Ravening Hordes to begin with, for my Skaven, and then I also 
then moved on to my empire and as you can see Warhammer Army's Empire is one of the boxes down there. Now the box set for this edition was actually uh, Empire vs Orcs but I didn't get that because it was too expensive. <laughs> so I had this book which was leading the way for me uh, which was a really awesome book. I really liked these uh, these books. I think they were really good and I've got a whole bunch of them on the shelf behind me. I might flick through some of those in a different video perhaps next week or something. Uh, but they were really well done, they had lots of background in them, they had really good rules and sort of ways for collecting armies and that kind of things as well. And they always had this really nice sort of character art on the back and miniature art and all that kind of thing as well. Uh, and then the thing that got me started with them properly, because obviously I had those books, and obviously they were ravening hordes that I managed to find a bigger picture of. It's really hard to find pictures of a lot of this stuff by the way, because <laughs> um, it's all really tiny and, and not a lot of people have archived it. But I started out with the Empire Battalion box that you see there, right? So the box set came with the, I think my one was actually smaller than that. Uh, I think mine came with everything but that. I don't think I got those. Because mine came with 10 knights, uh, Reichsguard knights, uh, a knight on, well a general, an empire general on horseback who I think I did with a knight's panther helmet possibly and then I had uh, the unit there which was actually all spearmen in the set that I got maybe I did get the I think it was an older box set than this and then I had a cannon as well in the set as well right? Uh, and I think it was probably that book then actually this is probably a later on in the period I think than the one that I had uh, but let me see if I can find yeah so it was similar to this but it, I think it, I said it as I say it only had 10 knights I don't think it had the free company uh, and then it had the 20 um, empire soldiers one of those I turned into like a Mordheim Reichsguard captain and all sorts of different things uh, but that sort of formed the base of my army my army never really grew much beyond that I think I had the mass ranks of spearmen uh, I don't think I ever made any swordsmen or halberdiers because I just never really thought about the idea of expanding. I had the Reichsguard Knights. I had the handgunners. Uh, so I bought a set of handgunners. Um, let me just do some, some digging actually. Warhammer 6th Edition Empire. Well, starter box. Boom. Let's see what comes up. Because I remember I had a whole bunch of stuff. Maybe I did have that, actually. I must have had a mix of this and something else that someone perhaps owned because I swear to God that I had this. Because I had those exact spearmen, I had that Empire Captain. I may have swapped, I may have halved this box with somebody and taken the other half. Man, I really can't remember. But I definitely had all those handgunners, I definitely had all the spearmen, had the Empire Captain and the cannon, which I think I made as a mortar for whatever reason even though a cannon was cooler uh, but yeah so I had all that and we go back to this and then for me I didn't really expand beyond that uh, I bought some grave uh, some empire greatswords off my friend which got added into my army so I had 10 greatswords which is kind of cool uh, I had um, all my uh, militia so I had militia in there I bought so many warrior priests tied into my army uh, and then one of the uh, other cool additions was this model which I have a really cool story about so this particular model uh, I picked up from Games Workshop or I think I may have got it for Christmas and it arrived at the house I opened it up on Christmas because it was a really big metal model uh, my parents were like I hope you enjoy this photo and I lost the head of the griffin immediately <laughs> Uh, and my dad said, don't worry. So we went back to the Games Workshop store the day after, or maybe a couple of days after after Christmas, and he said, look, we got this box and it didn't have the head of the griffin in it. Uh, and so the guy said, oh, don't worry, have a new box. So we managed to tweak that, which is kind of cool, and managed to get myself a proper one of those. So I had one of those, and it was really awesome. Uh, and I didn't really use him in many games, but he was really fun to play with, uh, and I really enjoyed him. Beyond that, uh, I started stepping into uh, the um, the realm of playing different armies. Um, 
I dabbled in dwarves during 6th edition, so I played with this particular book, would have been the book that I played with, although it had a blue outline, so it probably would have been, yeah, so it was this one, but it had a blue outline, uh, as you can see there, so it had a blue, pretty cool. Um, I played a little bit of Dark Elves occasionally. Again, I didn't really have any of these models, so just kind of used them um, when other people weren't using them. Uh, and then I played a little bit of High Elves as well for a little tiny bit. Uh, but one of my main focuses was actually Hordes of Chaos. So I picked up this book, uh, and this was around the time of... Uh, did they do it? The Storm of Chaos. So when the Storm of Chaos came out, I decided to play as Chaos rather than Empire. And so I had one of these old box sets, which was the old Chaos Warrior boxes. I may have had two of those, and my army consisted of two of those alongside a set of uh, Chaos Marauders. Um, and then I think I had a Chaos Lord on a... I think it might actually just have been a Chaos Knight that I used as a Chaos Lord on horseback. And that was my army that I used in-game. It was actually this box set, which came with the really awesome Adrian Smith artwork on the front of it. Adrian Smith sold me on Warhammer. Um, it's a real shame that he hasn't still got a lot of his artwork, pardon me, up on the internet, because it's, it's just sublime. Um, but I played a lot of this. Um, I played a couple of Storm of Chaos games. Uh, we can get rid of that, can't we? I uh, played a couple of uh, Storm of Chaos games, which was really good fun. Uh, I had a lot of a lot of fun with that edition, this edition of the game, and genuinely just played. This was the period of Warhammer that I played the most of, to be honest. Uh, I, I sort of dived in and played a lot of that, and had really good fun with it. Um, as I say, uh, I never really played. I never really had any of the rule books, <laughs> but I just kind of played and sort of learnt to play based on what other people said and and the rules that I could gather from what other people were talking about. Uh, and then I kind of left Warhammer Fantasy Battles for a really long time. And then went on to play games like Mordheim uh, and Necromunda and all that kind of thing. Uh, mainly because my friends stopped playing mass battle games and they stopped playing scary games. But that's a tale for another video, I suppose. Uh, and then the thing that brought me back was this. So the Battle of Skull Pass box. Uh, what had happened was um, this book had come out. Right, and uh, everyone was playing seventh, and then my friend said to me, "Why don't we dive back in and play some Warhammer Fantasy Battles?" It was me playing as dwarves, as I would find out. Uh, my friend playing as orcs and goblins, and then another friend of mine playing as ogre kingdoms, which were a new army. As you'll see, there are no ogre kingdoms here, right? <laughs> and there are no other. Oh, there's the ogre kingdoms, but they're for sixth edition, right? But I didn't start playing this edition of the game. I'd skipped 7th in its entirety, right? My friend had this and he'd played a couple of games, but I hadn't. And so when Battle of the Skull Pass came out, uh, well, before 8th edition rolled around, I bought the Battle of the Skull Pass box and split it with my friend, and then I bought this rulebook myself, right? So my friend took the... Uh, the Orcs and Goblins, as you can see here, which were these mass ranks of Night Goblins uh, with the Goblin Shamans, and then you had the Troll Bear as well. And then I took this side of things, which was the Dwarves, which only had, uh, what was it, 12 Warriors there, uh, 10 Thunderers, some Miners, the Dwarf Thane, the Cannon, the little Mining Cart thing, the Defences, and then they had Slayer there as well. So I painted those up, my friend painted up his night, his night Goblins, and then we played a couple of games. And from there we basically opened the doors to playing all sorts of awesome 8th edition stuff. So for the longest time, we, well, I only had this book to play with. Um, I thumbed through this relentlessly and read it and made hundreds and hundreds of army lists uh, and had a really good time. What we would do is we would um, play through this version. What we there, there are like there were like six scenarios in the back of the book. So there's things like battle for the pass, uh, fight for the tower, and pitch battle, all that kind of thing. And so what we did is we each made 
two thousand. Well, we had we we played two thousand point games, and every single game we played, one of us would be paired against the other, and we'd fight it out, and the other person would kind of be like the rules referee, etc. Right, uh, and so each of us would play every one of the others. At, so we'd each play two games effectively against every against the other people. So I play against the ogres, and then I play against the orcs and goblins. And then we move into the next scenario. We do the same, and we'd work, and we basically played through every scenario in this eighth edition book. And it was possibly some of the coolest wargaming. I say coolest wargaming that I've ever done. Uh, I supplemented my army over time by picking up this one. So um, this came with a bunch of additional warriors, as you can see here. So there's two sets of warriors. There was more Thunderers and there was Cannon there as well, so I added that into what was available from Battle of Skull Pass. And I bought as many Dwarves as I could possibly buy. Uh, and this is where this kind of shows off my kind of journey. So this was some of our early games. Um, so this was me uh, with my head glued to the table, as you can see, uh, looking very different, I guess, maybe. Um, with my borrowed Runesmith from my brother that I painted up and added to my army got my warriors there on either side, some with great weapons, uh, some with hand weapons, I've got my thunderers in the centre and I've got my uh, catapult at the back, my stone thrower uh, and we just played endless games against each other uh, and we had really good fun, uh, here's me with one of my later armies, well my updated armies, so there's my hammers that haven't been quite finished there, my iron breakers and stuff and we played over this kind of these kind of t tables and stuff, this was me with the the later edition of this is the eighth edition book finally that came out later on in the day. Um, my friend also experimented, so here you go. Here's some of the games against the ogres, which is pretty cool. Um, let's see what else did I find? Uh, and then this was a game against some of my friend's high elves because he moved on from collecting ogres to make painting an entire high elf army. So we played that as well, which was really fun. Um, I, this was also the time when I actually played the most games. Um, with my local my local store as well so uh, there's a store called Phoenix in Starbridge I'll put a link to their Facebook page down below so you can go and check them out they're really cool um, and you can see how old it is come well how old this was back in the day <laughs> uh, so this was us playing games of um, 8th edition on the tabletop this was some of our massive mega games that we played so we all bought along like I think it was 2000 points and we played out games across a huge table this was my kind of jerry-rigged um, uh, Anvil of Doom, so I took the uh, the war the Rune Lord model, put him on top of one of the mining carts, and then found this in an old box, and then used that against uh, against two of the guys in Grumble Armor uh, that I used as my, my my leaders and stuff, which is kind of cool. And here's some more of the games that we played at the uh, at the uh, store, just kicking ass, taking names, and playing out edition really, which was really really fun. Um, I also dabbled in some other bits and pieces as well. So one of the things that came out during this period was um, Warhammer Skirmish. So this was my little skirmish warband that you can see here. I, it, it, it almost hurts me to look at these because I know that I could paint them better now. But, you know, such as the... Uh, that was a fine cast model as well, as well by the way. <laughs> uh, such is the way of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of hobbying and, and, and wargaming. But yeah, I had really good fun with with all this. Uh, so yeah, so one of the things that we played uh, was um, Warhammer Skirmish. Here we go. So uh, here we go. So Warhammer Skirmish was a game system that allows you to play with smaller warbands. Uh, here are some of the rules for it online using the old um, uh, website. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I played a bit of Warhammer Skirmish, which was really good fun. Also played some uh, Warhammer Warbands as well, which is a really fun sort of twist on the rules. Playing with smaller armies. This was again kind of moving on from the um, the uh, the skirmish games that we had been playing, like more time and that kind of thing. Uh, and it was really fun just to dive in and play the game and, and have fun with it uh, at a, in, in a slightly different scale, I think, which was always fun. Uh, yeah, this was really good. And I really enjoyed playing that. Uh, but yeah, so we moved through 8th edition uh, as well. Uh, didn't really take to playing any of the big campaign stuff played maybe one or two games in the end times uh, which obviously came at the end of the edition um, but um, for me it, it, it all kind of came to a head with this book uh, I, I had this book I played maybe five or six games with this book with the new rules that came out just more or less just before the end of the edition <laughs> uh, and had a really good time with it just diving in and, 
and uh, kicking ass and taking names with my dwarves. There's the model for Belagar that came out with the 8th edition rules um, that I, I really enjoyed. And uh, there's my friend's ogres. <laughs> it's looking pretty cool. Got your paymaster and stuff in there and his tyrant and things, which is nice. Although I think that might be one of my friend, another person's ogres, and then that's the man eater there that was my friend's. I think it was a man eater. But yeah, so um, my Warhammer Fantasy journey as a whole then uh, was kind of started off with the end of 5th edition moving into 6th, playing as the Empire as my sort of main army of choice to begin with. I went through so many iterations of how I wanted to bring them to life um, uh, that I think this was the like the crowning glory of my hobby. Even though I have the, like a massive like four five thousand point dwarf army now, I think the Empire was the the sort of the, the, the ticking time bomb of hobby that set me off on the course. And I really enjoyed the Empire and what you can do with them. Like I love dwarves, but I I. I always wanted to do a witch hunter army where it was just militia. So it was all empire militia. They were led by a witch hunter and a warrior priest uh, that you could so you could pop them into your games. And then they had a captured wizard. Uh, and to me, the captured wizard would be the demon, uh, the, uh, the the demon host from one forty thousand uh, that would be painted up like a flame. Uh, like a bright wizard uh, and it was kind of like the witch hunter was always thinking to himself I will use the weapons of the enemy against them kind of thing uh, but it was going to be all militia basically uh, with flagellants in there as well of course you've got to have flagellants a uh, warrior priest and a, uh, and a witch hunter and then at the, uh, amongst them was going to be like one cannon but I was going to model it so that the cannon didn't have any wheels it was just dragged along and it was kind of like they'd looted it and it was manned by flagellants which was why it would always misfire and all that kind of thing which I thought would be really fun but it was one of those modelling projects that I just couldn't afford obviously when I was when I was younger but I always thought it would be a really fun idea um, so yeah the Empire has always been a massive draw for me Chaos was uh, as I say a huge portion of things one of the games that we did play was um, Path to Glory uh, so Path to Glory was a, an old skirmish rule set based around this edition of Warhammer uh, and the Chaos Warriors where you would build a Chaos Warband and obviously that's been adapted into Age of Sigma nowadays actually but um, and it's taken on a different life but it was where you'd have a Chaos Lord uh, and you would chart his progress from uh, a lowly uh, lowly warrior blessed by the gods through to becoming like a demon and all that kind of thing and it was really really good fun uh, we played it mostly with a couple, the couple of models that we had uh, and then everything else was supplemented by little kind of like cardboard discs and cardboard squares to represent demon hosts and spawns and that kind of thing because again we couldn't afford to, to buy all the miniatures that we wanted back in the day um, and we played on the floor in my friend's bedroom uh, but one fantasy battles has always had like a uh, a massive place in my heart and uh, I know that this is probably the case for a lot of people as well uh, that are um, that are watching these videos um, but hopefully this will have stirred up some fun memories of how you maybe got started with, with Warhammer I know a lot of people will probably have got started with with fifth to be honest uh, or maybe even before that um, I know that a, a lot of people played this and had really fun with it and fourth as well uh, a lot of people remember this being like the box set which was the um, the box set that came with the Bretonians versus the Lizardmen. I think my friend played with that before he introduced me to the game. So I know a lot of people had that one. Uh, but this was the one that really started it all for me. Started with that rule book, never really owned it, but read it. Ravening Hordes leading me through. Sorry for all the adverts popping up in the background, but that's what it is. Plays as Dwarves and Hordes of Chaos and the Empire as well. I had a really good edition with this game, uh, fun with this edition. This is when I would read all the White Dwarfs and everything, and, and there was Dark Shadows, and which was an amazing campaign. This was, I think, like the the high point of Warhammer for me, I think, on the tabletop. But yeah, I'd love to hear in the comments um, where you got started with Warhammer Fantasy Battles. Um, did you get started with 5th? Was it before that? Did you play 6th edition? Which was the one that you spent the most time with? Um, I'd love to hear your stories of how you got involved in the game below, uh, what armies you collected and all that kind of thing. I'm going to put a little list down in the in the uh, the comments as well, just so you can have a look at it and and and, uh, 
and refer to it as I go through it as well. But um, yeah, it was a really nice thing to come back and dive back into uh, One Fantasy Battles and um, see where my journey took me throughout the years. Um, maybe I'll talk about more time and stuff in the future, but uh, I have had a flick through the book and talked about it then as well. So we shall see, we shall see. Um, but yeah, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. A little bit of a wander down memory lane, a little bit of a nostalgia trip for me. Uh, where I started to misremember things and remember that I had things older than they were and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I think I must have a Ravening Hordes booklet somewhere on my shelves from back in the day. But anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, like, share, subscribe to all the social things if you want to. Uh, I, I mainly just want folks to subscribe and talk to me in the comments. I, I, I read all of them. I might not reply to all of them, but I do read all of them. And it's always fun to see people engaging and chatting about what they love about miniature wargaming on the tabletop. As I say, let me know how did you get started in one fantasy battles. Uh, this was how I I began and I'd love to hear more from everybody else as well. Um, I do also uh, have a Kofi link in the in the uh, in the comments down below. So if you like what I do and you want to send me a little bit of uh, extra moolah to buy to buy a cup of tea or something or maybe even add to my hobby collection. <laughs> And that would be greatly appreciated, but you do not have to do that. Commenting, liking, sharing, and subscribing is the best way forward. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this trip down memory lane. I certainly have. Uh, I am going to uh, awkwardly look up to the side as I stop this recording. And uh, yeah, uh, I'll chat with you soon. Well, next week for another video on Sunday. Bye for now.